Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so before I delve into the information theoretic arguments for circuit lower bounds, uh, let's start with uh, complexity theory in general. So what we do in complexity theory or computational complexity theory is trying to understand what is hard to compute, what is hard for computation, for computers in particular, but computation is not just about computers. And more specifically, we are trying to find uh, some problems, some tasks that, we, that require computation, and try to understand how hard, they, how hard are those problems, how hard is to compute them. And in particular, we are interested in finding uh, simple particular problems for which we can prove that they are hard to compute. Um, now, so when I'm speaking about uh, how to compute, I usually mean how to compute for general models of computation. That is, the models of computation that they are as strong as they or uh, as the Pentium you have in your office. But unfortunately, uh, it turns out that it is uh, quite a difficult task to show that something is hard uh, to compute for a general model of computation. And we have some results of those flavor, but they are pretty weak. So one of the strategies that we use in computational complexity theory to try to deal with this difficulty is to try to consider more limited models of computation and try to show that uh, some problems are hard for those models. And hopefully, if we, can prove, if we can prove hardness for those limited models, we will understand uh, some ideas, uh, have some insights that might be useful for uh, attacking the more general models in the future. And uh, it turns out that even uh, analyzing those limited models is very, very challenging. And even uh, at the level of those, at the most limited models we can think of, uh, our understanding is far from being complete. So I'll now uh, go to something uh, more concrete. So, so far I talked about computational problems or tasks. The most popular way uh, of uh, modeling those problems is just computing Boolean functions. So we consider functions 0, 1 to the n to 0, 1. That is Boolean functions. And we ask which functions uh, of those type, or which, functions, uh, which Boolean functions are hard to compute. And as I said, there are many limited models. I will uh, focus on one uh, particular model, the model of Boolean formulas. And this is just, uh, an, in order to compute a function by a Boolean formula, you just need to write it, uh, well, using a Boolean formula uh, with a Boolean operator, such as uh, conjunction, disjunction, and negation. So for example, if you consider the uh, function that takes two bits, call them x, and y, or better yet, a and b. Let's consider the parity function, the, par the function that uh, uh, outputs uh, 0 if uh, the number of, if both a and b are 0, or both of them are 1. And the out function outputs 1 if only one, if exactly one of them is one. This is just saying whether the number of ones is uh, even or odd. So the way I can write it uh, by a Boolean formula is uh, uh, one way to do it would be saying either uh, both of them are zero, that is the negation of A and the negation of B, or both of them are one. That is the conjunction, the, the conjunction of the negations of A and B. And this is, I take the disjunction of this with the conjunction of A and B. OK, so this is an example for a model. And uh, now the question is, uh, how do I define hardness for this model? So the hardness or the complexity of uh, a function in this model is the size of the formula that is required uh, to compute the function. And by size, I mean just to be concrete, the number of atoms that there are in the formula. How many times uh, the, variable, the original variables occur in this formula? 
So for this uh, formula, the formula complexity would, would be 4. Because uh, we have four occurrences of variables, two here and two here. Are you just giving me the absolute? Yeah. Sorry? Like giving me A plus B plus B. Oh, right. OK. So let's say. Uh, OK, good. Thanks. <sighs> OK. <laughs> oh, now I understand the laughing. Okay, sorry about it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have this uh, problem about. Uh, so this is the definition of the complex, the formula complexity of a function. So what can we tell about it? So more generally, we can say that uh, the parity of n bits. Bits requires formulas of size about n squared. So this is an example of hardness result. The, the larger the formulas required to compute a function, we consider this function to be harder. So this, so uh, a, the, the parity of n bits is maybe one of the most uh, trivial functions that, are, that have non-trivial uh, formula complexity. We, uh, we know uh, to prove a slightly better result, we know to construct uh, some additional function, a result by Hastad, which built on other works, which gives uh, a function whose formula complexity is n cubed, which is a little better. However, for a random function, on n bits, we know that the formula complexity is about 2 to the n, which is considerably larger. But this result is not uh, very satisfying for us because, I mean, a random function is not a function we really know how it looks. It's not a concrete function. It's not an interesting function, I would say. What we would really like is to show is uh, to show harness for explicit functions functions we that we can actually describe and tell how they look like and uh, closing uh, this gap or even narrowing it just by a bit uh, is a major uh, open question of uh, computational complexity theory uh, okay so and and the question now is how uh, can we approach it so there are multiple uh, techniques uh, for proving such uh, things, and uh, I would like to focus on one of them. How much time do I, left? Do I have left? No. Okay, great. So in the time that I have left, I'd like to mention a particular technique that uh, I find very interesting, and I've been thinking about uh, for the last year. So there is a result by Kouchmer and Wigdorson saying that in order to analyze the, formulas com the formula complexity of a function, uh, you can uh, focus on analyzing the hardness of a, a related communication problem. And by this I mean the following. Suppose I have a function f from 0, 1 to the n. 0, 1, and I want to analyze its uh, formula complexity. Then the result of kouchmer wigdorson is saying that uh, this, uh, the formula complexity of this function is equivalent to a related uh, communication game. And by this, I mean the following. We have two parties, Alice and Bob. Alice knows some string x in the, on which uh, f outputs 0. And Bob knows uh, some string y on which f outputs 1. And the question 
now is how many bits Alice and Bob need to tell to one another in order to find a coordinate i such that xi differ from yi. Clearly, x and y are different thing, strings, so such a coordinate must exist. And the question, and the question here now is information is an information uh, theoretic question. How many bits they need to exchange in order uh, to find out such a coordinate? So they, they both know f, and they just need to find out i. And it turns out that uh, if the amount of bits they need to communicate is uh, c, then this means that the formula complexity of f is roughly 2 to the c. And I'm omitting here a few technical uh, details. I mean. What I've said is formally not true, but essentially it's true. And I could have uh, made it technically true, but uh, that would require a little more work. Um, and this is actually if and only if. And the reason I think it's very interesting is because this translates our original problem to a problem about communication. And communication is somehow something that we in computer science understand much better than formula complexity or computation in general. And in particular, in the last, that doesn't mean that uh, it will be easy. Uh, this result is uh, about 20 years old and still we haven't managed to do a lot uh, with this technique. But uh, still uh, there may be some hope. And in particular, in the last decade, uh, we have seen uh, some techniques, uh, some new techniques using infor information theory to analyze uh, communication games in general. And what I've been doing mostly during uh, those uh, last few months is trying to see if uh, we can apply those new information theoretic techniques uh, to the particular uh, setting of those kachmer wigderson communication games. Um, OK, so just um, how much time do I have? Great. Okay, so, ju so just to finish, I'll uh, give a nice example of how you can prove uh, a lower bound like this easily using this uh, idea. And this is, an, uh, this is a, a result or a proof of uh, Karchmer and Wigerson from the original paper. So suppose I wish to prove that uh, the parity function on n bits requires formulas of n squared size. This means I want uh, to prove that this com that if Alice has a string whose parity is zero and Bob has a string whose parity is one, they need to exchange two log n bits. So suppose that I draw the bits, the strings x and y from the following distribution. x, y are uniformly distributed. strings that differ on one coordinate, exactly one coordinate. Then in this case, it is easy to show that, uh, e that Alice, given x, knows nothing about the coordinate on which x and y. Uh, uh, differ from Alice's point of view, the coordinate on which x and y differ is completely uniform, and the same goes for Bob. This means that if they find the, this coordinate, each of them has to learn log n bits of information, because this is the amount of information there is in a uniformly distributed number from 1 to n. But if each of them has to learn log n bits of information, then each of them has to transmit log n bits. And in total, the number of bits uh, that they both transmit is 2 times log n, which is what we wanted to prove. OK, I think I'll finish here.